This is CNN Breaking News. All right, we're following breaking news here at the top of the hour. The House voting right now on a modified FISA bill. Let's go straight to Capitol Hill and Lauren Fox for the very latest. Lauren? Hi, Brianna. Yeah, they are just in the midst of voting on this final version of the bill. But a couple of things have unfolded in the last half an hour. One of them is that a key amendment that was really important to some of those hardline Republicans failed. It failed on a tie. The vote was extremely close, 212 to 212. So what you are seeing play out on the floor right now is a vote on the underlying bill, the final version of this legislation that does not include an amendment that was very important to some of those conservatives that would have required a warrant if an American citizen was picked up in some of those dragnet searches that are part of the Federal Intelligence Surveillance Act, Section 702. So right now, what you're seeing is many more Democrats voting for this legislation than Republicans. Of course, there are some Democrats who are on the side of the privacy concerns that hardline Republicans have. But this is a very interesting moment for Speaker Johnson. This is something that a lot of hardline conservatives are blaming him for saying that this Biggs amendment, this Warren amendment didn't get included. They're frustrated. I just talked to Bob Good, a conservative, who said that this is the reason it didn't pass was because leadership was opposed to it. So it's going to be really interesting to see what does this mean for Johnson's future. I also just spoke to Marjorie Taylor Greene a few minutes ago. I asked her if this makes her more likely to push forward with that motion to vacate. She said that is not what she's saying, but she is very frustrated with Johnson's leadership on this issue. Brianna. All right. And so right now, as we're looking at the vote here, uh, can you see the tally there, Lauren? What are we expecting here as this is going to play out timing wise? Well, I think that we are waiting to see whether or not this passes right now. Yes, I can see the tally. It looks like they are about to call this vote right now. I can't hear exactly what he's saying there at the desk, but this vote is obviously looking like it's going to pass. And we are waiting to see that final announcement. But one thing I will just keep in mind for you here is that this was an issue that if the warren actually passed it was going to make it very difficult to get this through the united states senate the fact that that amendment went down means that it may have an easier time getting through that chamber getting signed by the president and enacted before the april 19th deadline brianna all right so and we are that, seeing here that this bill is actually passed yes and it did just pass we were watching that uh, happened before our eyes there. Uh, Lauren Fox, thank you so much for the very latest on Capitol uh, Hill. This modified surveillance bill passing having to do with Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Thank you for that report. Jessica. Well, as that is all unfolding on the House floor, embattled House Speaker Mike Johnson is on his way to Mar-a-Lago. He's going to hold a joint news conference with former President Donald Trump, looking to emphasize their close ties as Johnson faces a direct challenge to his speakership, as Lauren was alluding to there. GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is standing by her threat to force a vote to remove Johnson as speaker. CNN's Kristen Holmes is joining us now live from West Palm Beach. And Kristen, let's start first with what this press conference conference is supposed to be about election integrity worth noting here uh, that Trump continues to make false claims of widespread fraud in the 2020 election and that Johnson played a key role in Trump's efforts to overturn the legitimate results of the 2020 election. What more can you tell us? Yeah, Jessica, we're expecting two things out of today. One, we are told that they are likely to relitigate the 2020 election. Not surprising, given the fact that Donald Trump still continues to do that at rallies, behind the scenes, all the time. And we know that Johnson was a key player behind the scenes in trying to get that election overturned. But the other thing that they're going to, quote unquote, draw attention to today is this idea of non-citizens voting. This is something that has become somewhat of a Republican rallying cry. Now, I want to be very clear. It's not appear from any data that we have that this is a big issue. And also, there is a federal law banning non-citizens from voting in federal elections, the kind of elections that both Johnson and Trump would be dealing with. 
But again, Republicans have really seized on this issue. Donald Trump has said that Democrats actually want undocumented immigrants coming over the border to help them in the 2024 election. Part of this is linking this issue of elections to immigration, an issue that Republicans know is crucial to so many American voters. So we expect them to be talking about this today. I do want to add a little bit of nuance just so that we are clear. There are some cities and states who allow non-citizens to vote in local elections like school board elections, but this, again, is not something that is widespread. All right, Kristen Holmes for us in West Palm Beach. You'll be there as that all plays out this afternoon. Thanks so much. And joining us now to discuss, we have former Republican Congressman of Illinois, Joe Walsh, and also Sarah Matthews. She served as Deputy Press Secretary during the Trump administration. Uh, Joe, I mean, they're there to promote election integrity and without irony, no, no less. Yeah, uh, Brianna and Jessica, can we just for a moment pause and not brush by this and, and get into the politics? Like, what does it mean that Speaker Johnson's down there by his side? He, Johnson's down there with Trump to talk about election integrity. Donald Trump tried to overthrow an American election. He's been indicted twice on his efforts to overthrow an American election. And, and Brianna, I'd add this, Donald Trump on the stump at every one of his rallies so far this year is telling his voters again that either he will win or the election will be stolen from him. So already he's undermining our election. We, we cannot become numb to what this is. And, and Sarah, it's, it's worth noting, and Kristen touched on this, there is no, f federal law prevents any non-citizen for voting. So no state is allowing that to happen. There is some nuance with these local like, school board elections, that sort of thing. We just had that map up. Um, why, it, it's almost like we're in upside down land where you just, you have the facts that we just laid out that Joe just talked about. The, we know that there is a federal law preventing this. Why do they keep talking about this in this way? Well, it just furthers Trump's narrative that the 2020 election was stolen from him. And so he wants to spread misinformation like this. As we all know that uh, federally, uh, these uh, illegal immigrants cannot um, vote in our election systems, but he wants to perpetuate that narrative that they could because he thinks that it will help him not only prove that uh, his claims about the 2020 election, but it also plants the seeds of doubt in case he loses in 2024. And so I think that that's what he's starting to do. We saw him do this in 2020 when he talked about mail-in voting and how fraudulent it was. It was him trying to plant these seeds because he knew that there was a chance he could lose to Joe Biden, just as he knows that there is a chance that he could lose in 2024 again. Yeah, and Sarah, just because Johnson is visiting Mar-a-Lago, you know, it doesn't mean this is all going to work out for him with Trump's support. We should remember that. How do you look at this moment for how this, for what it could mean when it comes to Johnson's, uh, I guess, trajectory, <laughs> if you will? I think something that's really important to keep in mind is that loyalty is a one-way street with Donald Trump. And so obviously um, Speaker Mike Johnson was one of Trump's most vocal um, kind of spreaders of the big lie that the 2020 election was stolen. He's going down there today to hold this press conference to talk about quote, election integrity. Um, and he's doing that all because he knows that he needs to save his speakership because he's worried that um, Trump's close ally, Marjorie Taylor Greene, will force this vote on a motion to vacate and will oust him from the speakership. But it's uh, kind of pathetic, in my opinion, just because it seems like um, right now, Speaker Johnson's a little bit more concerned with keeping his job than actually doing his job. And his job is to put a vote on the floor for Ukraine aid, but he's afraid to do so because he knows that it will upset folks in the conference like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump because he knows that Donald Trump is not supportive of Ukraine aid. But Mike Johnson has a moment to really um, change the uh, course of history, honestly, with this Ukraine aid. On it, Ukraine is running out of ammunition and Putin looks more and more likely to win there if we are not helping them in their fight for freedom. And so right now, Mike Johnson's down going to Mar-a-Lago trying to kiss the ring to save his job, but I wish that he would actually do his job.